Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to part five of our WordPress plugin building series. Uh, sorry for the short hiatus between uh, video four and this video five here, and also for misnaming last video video five when it was only part four. I, I changed it, and this one is actually part five. And in this video, we're going to be focusing on uh, making our administrative page look a little more interesting than this because this is just a text says hello world and this is extremely boring and on top of that we can't even do any settings and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to uh, include bootstrap in this uh, just because bootstrap has a lot of good built-in features uh, for form building and all that and it's just a, a CSS uh, style sheet and JS file we're going to go get that is no cost and uh, make this look quite a bit better and uh, the way we're going to do that is back in here, this is in our Visual Studio Code Editor. Uh, this is where I kind of left us last time. And actually, I want to minimize this stuff because I want to show you how I get to each thing. All right, so uh, in order to do that, if you remember, this Hello World page is being called because we created a partial uh, inside of our administrative folder and under partials, and it was uh, just the plugin name admin display. And it was hello world and when we created our uh, menu back in the last video we just called to this as an include once so that's why it's showing in our uh, administrative side and so i want to add bootstrap to this i want to add a jumbotron in a form and we're not going to make it save using the wordpress options or anything at this point that's going to be probably in the next video but i at least want to show you how to set it up and make it a little easier on yourselves you don't have to do it from scratch because that's would take too long and it we should just compile it anyway it's a lot faster just build off something that already exists all right, so we're going to leave this file open, and we're also going to open the uh, admin page just from the admin, the base admin page, and then we're also going to go to our includes, and we're going to open just the class plugin name. All right, so in these files, uh, in the class plugin name, this is where uh, everything kind of gets called in and enqueued, and if we take a scroll down, as you can see under define admin hooks, there's also one for the public hooks, but we're in the admin folder right now. Uh, and that's why we're focusing on these. You see what it's doing is it's actually enqueuing scripts and enqueuing, uh, it's enqueuing styles and scripts using these WordPress actions. And it's calling to the the um, administrative file, or sorry, that's the public. It's right here, admin and admin. It's calling to the admin file. So it's actually going into uh, here and it's calling these functions right here to enqueue. And it's already enqueuing plugin, CSS plugin name admin CSS which if we come into our admin file and we drop out our CSS folder it's right there see that's what it's calling in right there and we can actually verify that by going here right clicking uh, view page source and if you scroll down you're gonna see it right here in this top CSS it's right here on line 47 see this plugin name CSS it's it that's the unique ID identifier it's actually getting that from right here where it's saying this plugin name and as you can see, it's calling to the folder and including media all. And we're just going to do a media all as well. Uh, there's actually different options for this. You could look further into it on like uh, different um, options for it, but all is the default. And we're just going to leave it as all to include our CSS script. Because we're going to actually put Bootstrap in right here. And then we're also going to include JS down here as another one. So let's just go ahead and, move, and get right into that. Uh, the, way, the easiest way to go about that is to just go to Google and type in bootstrap and it's gonna say this very first one get bootstrap.com all right and we're just gonna hit uh, download because we actually want to save these we want the compiled J uh, CSS and JS versions and I'm just gonna put I'm just gonna download these and then I'll show you guys where to put them all right guys so I downloaded it and I put it on my desktop and it comes as a zip package and I just went ahead and unzipped it into another folder right here and then I went ahead and opened up our HT Docs. All right, so this is in your C drive, your XAMPP, your HT Docs folder. This is all the sites that are accessible. We're working in SEO local. We're gonna to need to go into the WP content, the plugins, plugin name, because that's we just left it as the default from the WordPress boilerplate distribution. And then the admin folder. And then here's that CSS and JS folder in the admin that you see right here in the sidebar. That's where these files are located. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just start in the CSS folder. And there's that plugin name, admin CSS. And then in our bootstrap, we're gonna open up this CSS and we're gonna take bootstrap.min, and that's a .css file. And we're gonna take the .map file. And I don't know necessarily if you need the .map. I never use it. I just like to move them together because they're named together. All right, so now we have those two files in our admin CSS. And we're gonna do the same exact thing with our JS. 
which is over here, and you're gonna have a min and a min JS map, and I wanna pull those both in. And as far as the map, I, like I said, I'm just including it simply because it's the same name. I usually actually just pull in the .min file. I usually don't pull this in, but in this case, I'm just doing it. And so now, both of our JS and our CSS are in the actual file in place we need them, and we know that because if we drop these out, you're gonna see that they're automatically uh, updated. And if they weren't, you can just hit this button here. And so there they are. And so now how do we get them in? Because right now they're not in there. Well, back in that pl uh, plugin name admin file, which is if you just drop out the admin and you open it right here, you're gonna find the enqueue styles. We're actually going to copy this entire line here. And this is for our, let's see. So make sure that you uh, know which one you're looking at. In this case, we're looking at the enqueue styles. So this is our CSS sheet. And uh, one of the easiest ways to do this is actually drop this out. Make sure you use the .min CSS, not the map. Rename it, grab the entire name, just click back in here. Don't change anything in the name. And then just paste it in right here. And now we can't have the same uh, ID name. So in this case, I'm just gonna change, um, I'm just gonna put in some single quotes and then I'm gonna change this and just say um, bootstrap CSS. So now we have that included in there. And then if we drop down lower and we do the same thing with the, I could select line, there we go. We'll have the same thing with the JS. And uh, in this case, we're gonna change this just to say, you probably guessed it, bootstrap JS. All right, for unique name identifier. And then over here, we're gonna change this and you can do that by dropping out JS, the min JS, grab its full name so you don't have any uh, typos. And then just paste it on in there. And all right, now we're including our uh, CSS and our JS are now being enqueued into our plugin on the admin side, not on the public side. So this is going to allow us to access this uh, from our partial, which is exactly where we want it. So let's just go ahead and create a jumbotron and I'll show you what I mean. So actually with Emmett in here, you can just type, you can just actually do a div dot and then give it a class. And in this case, I'm gonna say jumbotron and then hit uh, tab. And now we have a jumbotron uh, div and let's put hello world in it. Remember when I was saying that we were gonna use Emmett and it was gonna help us a lot to shorten our work. All right, so now back in our plugin, if we refresh this page, Check this out. We now have a CSS Jumbotron, or uh, I'm sorry, Bootstrap Jumbotron. All right, we're gonna make this even easier on ourselves now with creating a form by heading back over to Bootstrap. And actually, uh, one of the easiest ways to do this is to go type Bootstrap form examples. There's a lot of these because there's actually a, from getbootstrap.com, they have form examples. And there's also from, some from W3Schools as well. But there's one in here particularly I wanted, which is this one here. So we're gonna go ahead and just copy everything inside this text field right here. Actually, the copy is fine. And we're gonna paste it inside our Jumbotron. And then we need to also have a button down here because this doesn't have a button in it. And we're just gonna steal the button from one of the next ones down. Even like here, where it says confirm identity. We can just take it right from here. I could write this as well, but it's so much faster just to um, go to where somebody's already read it and wrote or written it, sorry, and take it from there. So now we're just gonna say submit settings. And of course we have to make all this uh, WordPress uh, options form controls. We're, we haven't done any of that yet. That's gonna be the next video. This is just giving you an example of how to get it to the starting line much, much faster. So let's refresh this. And now check it out. We have a Jumbotron uh, in here. And actually let's just give it a header too, uh, just to kind of tell the user or tell the person what it's about. Remember when I said Emmett, like look at this, H1 tab, now we have an H1. All right, let's just say uh, WP10 example plugin settings and lowercase p here. All right, back over here. Make sure you save it by the way or it won't show up in here. All right, now we are already at this point where uh, we have a 
uh, fields with selectable options and we have a submit settings button and look at that it's on our settings page and now we're using bootstrap so we can use all the bootstrap examples like if you come to this uh, documentation from get bootstrap look at all this stuff in here collapses drop downs uh, all kinds of stuff you see all this stuff that you can use in here all this is now accessible to you inside of your um, plugin by uh, going to any of it so let's just say like uh, when I was just talking about jumbotron that's that's how what we called in was a um, CSS Jumbotron. Here's a fluid Jumbotron. And then let's go to buttons. Look at all these buttons by um, like, let's say uh, button danger. And you see how the class says BTN, BTN danger. Well, back over here, if you look at our button, it was BTN primary. We could just change this to danger and then come back to our, and this should be red now. All right, see? So it's going to allow us to really customize our uh, administrative settings pages uh, really easily using Bootstrap. And so that video was just a quick one on uh, being able to bring Bootstrap in. Usually I say it like this. Look, it, that pretty much wraps us up, I think, uh, for this part, uh, part five, where we were just kind of getting our form put together. And we could do this on this page, and we could do this on all of our pages and create importers and um, uploads because with the Bootstrap form, you can do a um, file upload. We'll probably do that as well just to show you how to let users upload stuff or for you to upload stuff to your own plugin. And then registering a short code and all that. We're going to get to all that. But that's going to wrap us up for this part. It uh, should be pretty easy, and at this point now we have some pretty good functionality inside of our plugin that's going to help us a lot in creating our forms and our fields. In the next video, we're probably going to focus on actually creating savable settings. We're probably not going to get to short codes yet. We're just going to be able to save our stuff into the database and then be able to access it. And then like if the user sets something in here, like say an email or like a title or something, when we uh, save it, it'll automatically show that saved title in here so it's editable. And then I'll start creating short codes where a user can put out all their information. And then maybe we'll get into some more advanced stuff like I was saying. Maybe like bringing YouTube videos through an API or something like that. So anyway, like, subscribe, comment uh, as usual. And I look forward to seeing you guys in part six.